Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Big P here. We've got a treat for you today. It's Rico. You know, you know. How are you doing, Rico? Good, thanks, mate. Yourself? I'm all right, mate. How have you been? <laughs> well, we've just gone into uh, tier three in uh, London, so a bit, uh, yeah, a bit muted, I would say. But yeah, you know, managed to have a bit of fun before we go into this position, so. Hopefully that will tie me over until Christmas. Ah, oh, so you're, you're stuck in the house doing your job at home still then, Rico, not getting out? Yeah, it's, it's nine months now, so yeah. Although I'm I'm going to go to uh, Finland this weekend if oh, yeah. my flight doesn't cancel. Yeah. You're going to be going back home to see some, some people who you know and stuff, family and that? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, flights are still going, so nothing's stopping me. So let's hope I can go. How much does that cost to fly there, Rico? Is it is it, is it dear flights? There's less flights now than there used to be. There used to be like two a day. Now there's four or five every week because of the pandemic. There's not as many people flying. So this time it was like 300. But usually I can get a flight for 150. So that's the same as a train ticket uh, but for, further north from your house, to be honest. What do you do then? Just fly straight into uh, Prague? Then? I fly to no, I fly to Helsinki, um, and then from Helsinki. Prague, I, what's Prague then? Is that is that's that... uh, Czech Republic? Oh, is that not, is that nearby? No, no, that's more like Central Europe. Oh, well, geography not... really needs. We need to get your map for Christmas, Porky. <laughs> Some of the geography <laughs> things yeah. have been uh, interesting over the last few episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, geography, I was never really good at. Uh, so you should know Helsinki because that's where fought for uh, Abraham, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, then. Uh, what we're gonna say is, what do you think about the Eddie Hearn show at the weekend from start to finish? The pay per view, the, the, the intense raw beef in the hotel at night. For, you know, everybody all kicking off and in the bubble. What do you yeah. think about it? Um, they did the classic thing where they just want to put as many heavyweights on the show as possible. And so remember when Eddie used to talk about the night of the heavyweights, like that was the thing he used to talk about maybe a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so they tried to do something like that, but it's not always down to Eddie because Joshua owns the show. Um so he put his guys on, right? He put on a Coley, Case, Ashback. And then the rest of the guys and shows he put on were relatively cheap compared to what he'd have in a, on an undercard like this. I understand it's obviously a pandemic and, you know, they don't have gate receipts. But then again, the pay-per-view was 25 quid. So you'd warrant a better undercard. Um, it's running through the undercard, you know, Florian Marku, you know, hyped up guy. Signed probably with the pretense that he's going to go on to uh, matchroom Joshua undercard. He went on there. There was a fight in the a fight in the corridor, which uh, IFL were able to film. And <laughs> intense, intense raw beef. I think he won the fight. To be honest, um, I think he, you know, I'd say probably he, he got robbed, jobbed at least. Not necessarily robbed, but he got jobbed, right? Um, but anybody that knows or has seen Florian Marker fight, uh, knows that he's of a certain level. Um, he looked quite destructive in that ultimate boxer, but, you know, you put him in with Chris Congo or Conor Ben, it's only going to go one way. Yeah, it's... Uh, you see Conor Ben icing him, Marco. Yeah, I mean, Florian Marker's quite short for Walter White as well. It's quite short and compact. He throws a lot of like wide punches, hooks, um, doesn't throw many straight punches. He doesn't really use his jab. So against guys that are quite tentative, he comes forward and, you know, he scores highlight real knockouts. But against somebody that can box like this weekend, we saw he struggles a bit. And somebody like Chris Congo or Conor Ben are quite well schooled in boxing, uh, more so Chris Congo, you know, they'd eat him alive. A huge yeah. ticket seller for him, Marku. Sells about three, four, five hundred tickets to Albanians. They all come and support him. So that's really the end game, isn't it? Getting a lot of those Albanian fans into the next gen shows and all these shows. Yeah, it's uh, 
It's funny now. It, well, it's it's isn't funny because I'm obviously I'm hardcore, but it, how boxing is going at the moment with this, how they're selling fights and how they're trying to push it. It's it's shocking. I mean, I've just seen some about regarding uh, what's he called Logan Paul? Is it Jake Paul? Yeah. One of them lot and calling out Conor McGregor, and he's basically insulted his wife and. Things like that. Have you seen it online? Yeah, I've I've seen it. Um, you say something bad about Irish people as well, or some? Yeah, I look. I think if you're a proper fighter, you don't need to stoop that level. But I think boxing has allowed the circus in, and now we're having boxing used as a platform for circus fights. Like, could you see the UFC put on a fight between Logan Paul and? Or whatever the poor brother is, and Conor McGregor. No, no, they won't. They won't do it because it's too serious to support. Dangerous, isn't it? If the if a YouTuber got injured and really disfigured, or touch wood, it doesn't happen. But if he got if he died in in ring in a UFC ring, there would be hell to pay, wouldn't there? There'd be hell on. And I, and I think that uh, boxing referees are there. They'll give them bigger gloves, and it's. It, it's a bit safer than a UFC fight, but boxing's allowed it to happen, and and it now and now it's going out of control, isn't it? A bit, do you think? Yeah, I mean, look, it's become a circus. But when there's money to be made, a lot of these people in boxing aren't going to say no to it. Uh, and there's much worse things that happen in boxing, anyways. I mean, boxing's always been billed as this sort of hyperbole, and you know, everything's very intense. Like every. It feels like every single big boxing event is like a closing down sale of Woolworths. You know what I mean? It's like, this is the greatest fight. This is the last thing. You yeah. need to buy this. And then two weeks later, it's like, you need to buy this. You know, and then when there's good fights, they often find the radar, like Callum Smith against Canelo. Great fight. Fights, yeah, which is probably the best fight that a British fighter has been involved in since Fury Wild, I'd say. Um but just in general, maybe in the last 10 years, you, it's hard to name four or five better fights that a British fighter has been involved in, facing a pound for pound number one. And you have, um, you know, and there's not the peep from Sky or BT or even the national media hasn't even covered it that much. There's, there's nobody saying a word about Callum Smith on social media and on Sky this week. Yeah, you have to remind people of the fights this week. And, you know, it's an incredible fight. So, and by all means, you know, it's Canelo is who he is, but it's a lot more competitive and it's not, it's not a fight that you can look at and say, this is a foregone conclusion. I mean, Callum Smith has a lot of advantages, which I'm sure we'll get on to later, but, you know, it's a fight that people should really get behind and, you know, boxing journalists should really get behind. I think that Callum Smith has got as good a chance as anybody to beat Canelo or who Canelo's fought. I mean, it's probably Canelo's hardest fight, I think, apart from Mayo. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's hard to name who's Canelo's best win outside of... Well, you're thinking about the likes of Kovalev, Danny Jacobs, who's a B-class fighter. Kovalev was washed up. Uh, who else is he for? Triple G, one fight was a draw, which he probably lost. The second fight was... I gave it to Canelo, but that could have went either way. But Triple G was not at his peak at that point. So now he's fighting against the prime guy. That's a 160, you know, one, 168. So, you know, this is a real test for Canelo. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, I think that the Kovalev fight, Rico, was they got Kovalev at the right time. It wasn't there something with the hydration course. Don't quote me on, well, don't quote me on it. I was saying it on camera, but. I'm not sure if one he, was he only allowed to put so much weight on after the rehydration or summer, you know, for the next yeah. day. Yeah, and also he came off. It was six weeks between that and the yard fight, which was a hard fight for Kovalev, wasn't it? Yeah, we and obviously he's knocking on a bit now, isn't he? Yeah, and also it was in another country, so he'd have to fly, factor in jet lag, everything else. You know, you're not really putting on another camp six weeks after your next fight. Mm. You're going to have to squeeze everything, so sparring, everything else. What what are you going to do? Plan for the fight, everything else. You know, they caught him cold, but the money was there, so they went for it, and I'm not sure whether we'll see Kovalev in the ring again. Do you feel that Callum Smith's got a chance and that Liam Smith, his brother, will be giving him a few pointers because he's been in with Canelo, hasn't he? 
Yeah, and if Joe Gallagher's been in the corner, so he's had a better look at Canelo than anybody else. Um, and also, it, Callum Smith's quite different to Liam Smith. He's he's a tall guy. Yeah. Um, he's got the physical advantages. He's not going to get dragged into a fight. Um, I think, and also he'll be very up for this fight. Like, there's no question. This, he knows this is his sort of biggest fight of his career. I mean, Groves was the biggest one to that point. But if he wins, that will probably be the greatest British victory since... Um, Lloyd Hunnigan against Don Curry. Yeah. Do you feel that uh, Callum Smith's at his peak now? It's always hard to say when a fighter hasn't fought many fights back to back. So obviously we've, we've had the pandemic, um, but physically you'd like to think so. And also he's had experiences, right? He had a close fight with John Ryder. Um, however you scored that, he's he's been headlining a big event in Saudi for the World Boxing Super Series. He's He's been in all sorts of fights. You know, he had a big domestic fight against uh, Rocky Fielding. So he's experienced everything. So, I mean, he was also, I saw a Joe Gallagher interview where he said that, you know, Callum Smith was there when Beefy Smith had his fight. So he's So he knows all the, you know, what it's like to be in the changing room, all the antics from Team Canelo, everything else. So he's not going to be phased by it. And actually having his brothers around and Joe Gallagher's, that's the perfect team for him for this fight because they they know what to expect. Yeah. Moving on to Joe Gallagher, right? He's had a lot of stick over the years because uh, the art, the art cause just seemed to just take a dislike into him years ago. I don't know why. But looking at his career as a trainer and manager, you'd have to say that it's pretty sparkling, isn't it? What he's done for for a minute, his lads. Yeah, look, he's what was he, Ring Magazine Trainer of the Year? Yeah. Can we name other Brits that have done that? I, I can't certainly from the top of my head. Um, also, I think people give him stick, and I've given him stick before, but frankly, you know what? He looks after his own, and that's the most important thing in boxing. He doesn't care about what others think about him. It's all about looking after his own. And I don't think at any point anybody could have labelled that he's a bad manager or he doesn't give his all to his fighters. There's been a couple of things he's done that I didn't like. I didn't like the one where he left Morrison in the fight. I thought he should have pulled him out earlier, but you don't know what's going on between a trainer. Yeah, and I'm not, you know, I'm not a qualified trainer and I wasn't in the corner. So it's just one of those things that every trainer probably has small regrets that they could have done something differently. But, you know, guys like Jose Bert, sorry, not Burton, um, you know, guys that he's worked with, Callum Johnson, others, you know, he's done very well for them. Do you feel that Paul Smith going from journeyman to Andre Ward were a good move for him? Or do you think it was just to get a few quid? Because he likes yeah, to test his centre against the pound for pounders, doesn't he? It's opportunity, wasn't it? It's just... Hey? If you don't take it's opportunity. If you don't take Andre Ward, then who who are you going to get next? Like there isn't even when he fought against Abraham, right? Andre Ward's a step up from that. And also, Andre Ward had been out the ring for two years at this point, so you might try and catch him cold. Yeah, yeah. All right then. So, are you giving Canelo the uh, edge in uh, as a as a favorite on on uh, we? Yeah, I think I think we have to. Right, the cards up stacked in his favour, but if I'm looking at fights that uh, where Canelo could potentially lose, this is probably the biggest one since the Triple G fight, where I think there's a reasonable chance that Callum Smith could win, and I really hope he does. I mean, why wouldn't I hope that Callum Smith wins? And I think any British boxing fan should really hope that Callum Smith wins. Yeah, I do. Uh, backing up to the Eduardo show, Yes. Five quid. What it worth? Twenty five quid. No, I I think just thinking about the card, you know, Bocoli against Kuzman, decent fight on paper. Um, you know, you have to judge these cards by when the fights are made. Hugh Fury against um, Wack. You know, it was a good fight for Hugh Fury. Um, I think again he suffered a cut, but he fought through, and Wack gave a tough fight for White, and I think. Hugh Fury, he definitely looked more exciting. And I, I kind of felt like 
he felt that he had to be more aggressive in the fight to win fans over. And, you know, he is a good boxer and he's probably flown on the radar because of those few losses he has. Yeah. Um, but I think his style as a boxer will cause problems to a lot of the heavyweights because, as we've noticed, a lot of the heavyweights can't box at all. Um, but, yeah, it was a good fight in terms of Wahi Fury. And then you had Okoli against the late replacement, the guy that was 19 and 0 and 1. Um, but, you know, this guy was sort of a, what was he, a late replacement, and he he'd lost to the guy um, that Buatzi had fought. So I think that was the thing in, in the amateurs. So we have a pretty average guy fighting against Buatzi who knocks out clean. Buatzi looked all right, to be honest. Um, he's not my cup of tea as a fighter, but he looked all right. And then you have Joshua. So I think he'd really missed that world title undercard fight or a few proper 50-50 domestic fights that we're really looking forward to. None of the fights on the undercard are fight stars like desperate to see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you think to Yui's performance? As I said, look, it was tough, right? He got cut. It was probably reminiscence of uh, the ghost of the uh, pool and fight he had. Uh, he boxed well. Uh, he didn't take too many risks. And I think he was more entertaining than usual. And, you know, it's all at this stage for you. I think he's ready for the likes of Dillian White. I'd love to see him in, in against Dillian White because I actually think he'd beat Dillian White. Um, there's a lot of good fights for you, whether that's Dubois, whether that's Joyce, whether that's White, whether that's, you know, somebody like Bacoli. I'd love to see one of the fights I thought on the undercard would have been quite good would have been Bacoli against Hugh Fury. Both are quite hyped up fighters. I think Hugh Fury would win that fight. So... He cut you I, when I was in camp with Peter uh, a couple of years ago. Bacoli cut you. Yeah, but oh yeah, uh, was that before the Pulev fight? Yeah, yeah, he got cut uh, before a week to go. Bad cut as well, it was. Yeah, well, Bacoli's not a bad fighter, but I don't think he's schooled to his level, is it? And also, he's only going to get better as the years go on. If we're talking about AJ being at his peak now, He's about five, six years off that. Yeah, Huey's not peaked yet. I mean, he would beat Joe Parker now. I mean, he'd probably beat him in the first fight, but he'd beat him now. Yo, jo Joseph Parker won't be able to land a glove on Huey. No. Do you know, I, I don't think so. I think I think he were robbed in that fight. He we was. We that, don't we? Yeah. Uh, so... What did you think to Akoli's performance? You know, I'm not a big fan of his, don't you? But what did you think to yeah. his performance? Look, he fought against... Akoli's the kind of guy that... He'll look against guys that uh, aren't there ready to fight or aren't at his level because he can land on them. But once somebody's a good boxer, Akoli starts holding because Akoli can't fight in the short range. He can only fight sort of when somebody's, you know, what's in you know, long range. And that's the thing that Akoli was, that fight was perfect for Akoli. It made him look good. But when he's starting to fight against the cruiserweights um, that can fight all ranges, are well-schooled boxers, can take punches, what well, then? I'm not that convinced about Akoli uh, personally, but he looked pretty good. But again, the opponent was pretty dreadful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, moving on to the main event, what did you think, Joshua, against? Yeah, it's a tricky one, right? I thought it was a... I've got, like, two different views on the fight. So, one is that Joshua probably looked... It was quite a complete performance from Joshua, um, that he boxed quite well. But on the other hand, he was quite tentative, wasn't he? It wasn't like he was willing to take risks. Uh, the other thing is that Pulev just isn't that good anymore. I mean, he's quite a basic fighter. And he, at no point in that fight did he think that Pulev would figure out something to stop Joshua. And I think once Joshua realized that, he turned up the heat and took a few more rests. And that, that's what you have to do. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, Joshua's been out of the ring for a year now. So I think he boxed quite well, but... It doesn't give me confidence necessarily that he'd beat Wilder or Fury with that performance. 
Yeah, it's uh, he's built up to be this ice man, Joshua, isn't he? But he ain't, is he? No. <laughs> He's built up to be this killer, but he's fighting like a scared rabbit, isn't he? I think he just don't want to engage, does he? No, he doesn't want to take any risks. But again, he's focused more into boxing over the last twelve months and eighteen months. I'd say he's got better at that. And I think before we labelled all criticism at him for not boxing well, that he was, you know, quite robotic. Now he's trying to find the style that works best for him. So he reminds me a bit of, um, not the same style, but remember when Klitschko got uh, stopped twice? Uh, was it Corey Sanders that stopped him and uh, Brewster? I think so, yeah. But they, um, after that, Klitschko sort of adopted the safety first style where he'd jab the guy and then he'd wear them down and then he'd knock them out. And I think Joshua's sort of figuring out what is his style where he doesn't take the risk of being, you know, knocked out. I'm not saying Joshua's chinny at all. What I'm saying is that I think he's afraid to engage with the risk of him taking a big shot because he's not confident that he can take that shot. Do you feel that Joshua now wants to be Vladimir so badly? I, I think I think he's obviously learned from Vladimir. I mean, if you look at how you run a heavyweight camp and how you do everything else, Vladimir is the ultimate professional. I think Josh has realised that all the other stuff that's not boxing related takes away from his boxing and uses up his energy. I think he's, you know, he's got a good team around him now. He's got, you know, people around him that challenge different ideas and think in a different way. I think he's probably enjoying his boxing again a lot more than he than he did before the Ruiz fight. He probably felt like he was just going through the emotions. Um, so I think. The short answer to that is yes, he probably is, but I think he's going to have to try and figure out what his style is. But I don't think now is the right time for him to face Fury, despite that being the fight that we all want to see. But for him, that's not the right time for him to face Fury now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is how I look at it, right? Vladimir had all them defences, right? But the, the, everything were in Vladimir's favour, everything. Who they fought, ring size, gloves, referee, judges, and I, and he, he d did fought all his mandatories, didn't he? And, and you know all that kind of thing. And I think Joshua is just going to have a reign like that, where he's not going to fight anybody where they think, yeah, he could get beat here, you know, that kind of thing. Because the Andy Ruiz fight, that wasn't one of them. Oh, he, he could get beat here. He, he was there just to be blown away, wasn't he, Ruiz? Well, we all laughed at that fight before it happened. I think I was here just saying what a terrible fight it was. But I still maintain that Andy Ruiz isn't a good heavyweight. Yeah. Nothing's changed. I mean, he caught Joshua in the first fight. And in the second fight, he did nothing, Andy Ruiz, because he wasn't in shape. He just hit a lot, lottery ticket. But I'll ask you a question, Ross. If he fights against Usyk or Usyk, is that a fight where you think this is a good fight? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm interested in that fight. If Joshua don't fight Fury next, and I don't think they're going to fight for a couple of years yet, they want fans back and they want the, the economy to change. They'll, they'll keep milking it. They're doing. They're going to do the same thing as they did with Chris Eubank Senior. You know, in AKA yeah. English. They're going to do that, and they're going to keep milking it and milking it. And then when everybody's screaming at them and the fans are losing interest, then they'll throw like a Nigel Benry match in. Then they'll probably go for something like a Joshua Fury. I think so. Till then, yeah. they're going to pick, they're going to have to fight, every, he'll fight everybody else except Joshua. Joshua will fight everybody, else, sorry, except Fury. I don't think you're going to hear Tyson Fury because he knows he gets beat. It's full Yeah, and the longer that goes on, the more likely he is to beat Tyson Fury. That's the reality of it. Because the longer Tyson Fury is in fighting against top-level opposition, the longer he's doing within himself. If this becomes a legal battle between Wilder and Fury, let's say drags on another year, it's just bad for Tyson Fury in every single way, uh, yeah. which we don't even need to go into why it's bad for Tyson Fury. So I think they're going to try and catch him on the next low. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to happen this year. I keep, we keep hearing all this. And look, they know themselves it ain't happening, but they've got to keep the story going, haven't they? Yeah. You know what I mean? Do, do you think um, Do you think we 
if you think in Team Joshua, you know, they sort of headspace, do you think they need the Fury Five? Because I don't think they do. I know um, Chatting Terry, um, he obviously think that, thinks that's an important fight for Legacy, but I personally don't believe that fighters really care about Legacy because Legacy doesn't pay the bills. And also, if you can make 50 million fighter against a Dillian White rematch or something like that, versus making 30, 40 million fighting against the Fury, you're better off fighting Dillian White twice than you are against fighting against Fury. Only way they're going to fight Tyson Fury is if Joshua gets beat twice by Usyk, they will beg for the Fury fight. Then they'll go to the, they'll, they'll be brought to the table then. And then it'll just be Fury feasting on a carcass, won't it, basically? Yeah, although I'm, I'm one of the people, I've never been that convinced what... Um, what's left of Fury, you know, like, as in, he had a very good performance against Wilder that didn't look great on the night. He got knocked down twice against Wilder. He went life and death with Otto Wallin. It's a bit of recency bias for Fury that he's suddenly become this ice man and he's at the peak of his powers. Of course, he's a great heavyweight, he's a talented fighter, but he's sleeping, Ross. I'm not, mate. Sorry. Sorry, mate. I'll rest <laughs> Yeah, I, I just don't I don't buy this narrative that Fury is suddenly the greatest heavyweight to ever walk this planet. I think that uh, Tyson Fury, that performance against Wilder might have flattered him or yeah. it might just be him turning corner with a new trainer. I don't know. He did look sensational, didn't he? So we're going to we're going to find out in his next fight. But at the moment, it looks to me like he's parked up in legal battle in a legal battle. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the other person people have written off straight away, although he's gone a bit loopy, is Wilder. But what's to say that Wilder, if they fight against, F if he fights against Fury again, and you know he's got his head right, and he's got a new team, and you know they analyze the fight and figure what he did wrong, what's to say that Wilder doesn't ice Fury? Fury's not. He doesn't have a granite, a granite chin, does he? He's got heart, though. He gets up, doesn't he, Tyson? Has he been docked down five times in his career? Four or five now altogether? I think he gets up, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, if Joshua fights against Fury, I just think Joshua needs to come out all guns blazing. There's no point in trying to box Fury. He, tries to, he just has to try and catch him. And Joshua has the power to stop Fury. Mm. Yeah, he does, but I just don't see it happening. I don't see him getting to him. I think Tyson will just fumble him for, for 12 rounds and win on point. Yeah. That's that's the thing, and also with Tyson having such long arms, it's quite. Um, I don't know how Joshua gets behind, you know, inside that jab and manages to do some damage. What did you think about uh, the aftermath of the weekend? You know, where we have to say, you know, your cold worlds and all that. These people, Callis and where they're saying that he's evolved, Joshua's evolved, and you're now seeing him going through a change and all that kind of thing. Do you agree with that? Yeah, he probably has. I mean, he's improved his boxing. Um, but also, as I said, he's probably a bit more tentative. So before the Ruiz fight, he was always convinced that he can walk through anything and he can throw punches and he can knock the other guy out. And that's what happened in most fights, right? bar that moment against um, Dillian White. But now he knows that he can get caught, so he's a bit more afraid of what's coming back, and that has made him realise the point is to box better. Yeah. Uh... But why wouldn't he evolve, right? Tell me a fighter that, you know, you're not going to be a good fighter if you're not going to add to your arsenal. If you've got 10, 12-year 12 12 career, you need to evolve because the power is not going to carry on forever or you can't physically compete with younger guys. You need to think about other ways. Even somebody like uh, Sugar Ray um, Leonard, right? He yeah. changed his style over the years. Floyd Mayweather did the same. What do you think is going to happen with WBO, Rico? Do you feel that uh, he's going to vacate and, Ed, and Eddie's going to let Usyk fight Joyce? Or, because it looks like Frank's pushing for, for it now, and it for Joyce and Usyk if Joshua's going to well, that's the out, isn't it? Okay. That's the out why the fight won't happen. Joshua wants to be undisputed, so, you know, if they can't get the negotiations done, that's the out. Um, the WBO, let's be honest, they'll accept money if 
step aside money is given. You think step aside money will be paid then so that Fury can fight Joshua? I mean, call me a sceptic, but I just don't believe that Fury is going to fight against Joshua next year. It's just not going to happen. I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm going to to ask you if you think these certain people beat Joshua. Sorry, if Joshua beats these certain people. Does he beat, just answer yes or no, does he beat Joe Joyce? Uh, Yes. He beats Joe Joyce. Does he beat Dylan White in a rematch? Yes, easily. Does he beat Parker in a rematch? Because I've heard that mentioned today that they might be... Yeah, yeah, Parker. I want to see that again now. I mean, that's not a good fight at all. Does he beat Usyk? Yes, because I, I, I wasn't impressed by Usyk against uh, Chisora personally, so I think he does beat him, just on size. What also, did... Usyk's not going to win on points, is he? And does Joshua beat Fury? Uh, no. Does he beat the... Fury? Pardon? Does he beat Yui Fury? I would... I'd have to see. I'd have to see Hugh Fury produce something that we haven't seen in the ring before. And I know Peter talks uh, uh, about Hugh doing stuff in the German. Obviously, he's been in Germany many times that yeah. you know heavyweights can't do, but that hasn't translated into the ring. Um, but I think Hugh Fury's style, in theory, is the anecdote to Joshua. But he'd probably have to blend that with his more aggressive style yeah. because that's a you know, Peter, I mean, Peter's probably in the top three heavyweight trainers in this world. Yeah. Uh, so Peter will be able, you know, Peter will be able to figure out a game plan. It's whether he can execute it. And also the important bet is whether the judges score stuff for he or not. You're not going to get, a, nobody's going to want to rock Joshua's boat if it goes to points, Sally, because he's too big a star now, isn't he? Exactly. Um but yeah, I think if, if he can figure out a more aggressive way and improve on the performances that we've ever seen, then it's a possibility. But I'd still back, I mean, from what I've seen, I'd say yes, Joshua. And the same goes for Usyk as well. I mean, just to be fair, um, you know, Usyk didn't look, in my opinion, great against uh, Chisora. But if he can become better than that, then he's going to be trouble for Joshua. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Do you think that Joshua's slower than he were? Um, I don't know. That's a good question because he obviously moves around the ring a lot more. Um, his uppercuts look pretty fast and his punches that he was throwing. Um, but it's always hard to tell what heavyweights because you look at someone like Pula, but he looks very slow, doesn't he? Yeah. He looks slow and lethargic. So anything compared to that, um, and Joshua is not really a combination puncher, so sort of single shot. So he's he's quite good at that. But yeah, I think part of it as well is because he he sort of flicked his jab, didn't he? He didn't really put his weight behind his jab, or he didn't throw that one-two, which is which is known for. So we didn't really see him. It was more sort of throw a punch and pull it back quickly to guard the chin, so I don't get knocked out by a left hook if I throw my right, right hand. Do you think that Usyk's got a chance against Joshua, though? Do yeah, he does. Got a chance does. to beat him on points? Uh, yeah, he does, on points. Do you think that Joshua looked like he'd gassed in that fight against Pulif and he was waiting for his second wind? No, I think, I think personally, that Joshua's always worried about gassing in a fight. So for that reason, he keeps some back. It was a bit like that Yard against Lyndon Arthur fight where Yard actually started unloading in the 12th round because Yard as well, similar kind of guy, quite muscular, is worried that if he would have emptied the, ta- emptied the tank, so Joshua against Pula when Pula was hurt in the fourth round, then he might have regretted that later on in the fight. But actually the fight should have been stopped at that point when Pula uh, turned his back at the ref and Joshua. Mm. What did you think about Eddie Earn saying that Joshua's uh, a work in progress and blah de blah, but yet still charging twenty five pound? Well, weren't we told that he was the second coming of Muhammad Ali uh, a couple of years ago? So, 
you're either a work in progress or you're not, but which books that isn't a work in progress? Yeah, I mean, he's had 11 pay-per-views now, Joshua. Do you think that it's pure greed now? You know, He's not giving anything back to the fans. Yeah, they do. He could have done the fight as a tenor or something and give something back to us in these hard times. Yeah, I agree. And it wasn't a good card or an expensive card. Um, yeah, I, I agree. It should have been done cheaper. And it would have been a gesture of goodwill. Um, but I also do find, look, the world is split between people that love Fury and people that love Joshua. And there are many people in the middle like me. So it does feel like anything Joshua does or says, uh, whether that's the post-fight inter- interview, gets so over-scrutinized. And, you know, you've got journalists coming out saying that, you know, Fury apologists, these guys um, like Adam Cattle and others uh, on TalkSport, saying that Joshua needs to say this if he really wants to fight. I just think... Uh, yeah, he should have probably done more for the fans, but also, you know, he just beat Pulev. It was a bo- it wasn't a good fight. Nobody wanted that, um, but he beat him quite convincingly. He didn't look in trouble, so we sort of move on and hope that he fights against a tougher opponent next year. But also the hyperbole around Fury after that Wilder fight, when everybody was basically kicking him a few years ago, has now gone a bit mad as well. People are like so Fury fanboys. You can support Fury fanboy. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Don't start with fanboys. Stig might make a comeback. Fury uh, How is Stig? I had a text off Stig over there. He uh, sent me a video from one of it, where he came to one of Dennis's shows. He sent me it and uh, I thought it was quite funny actually. But uh, yeah, he's harmless and he's Stig. He means well, doesn't he? Yeah, exactly. He's a nice guy. Sending my best anyway. Well, Stig, you're watching. Rico sends his best. So Joshua's basically, he's had 11 pay-per-views and 10 world title fights. He's a multi-sufly swimming in Chochai now for money, isn't he? Yeah. 11 pay-per-views on the trot, right? And still... They've not fought Fury, they've not fought Usek, not fought Joe Joyce, they've been nowhere near Lewis Ortiz. Wilder. Just going to keep churning him out and staying and keeping him out of arm's way. I said all this from day one when they signed him that they will not put him near any danger, right? Now, 11 pay per views later, well, how many fights he had now? 25. They will go another 10 pay per views and still not fight Fury because that's just the accountant's mentality of his handlers, isn't it? There's too many people eating at the table. For example, Terry made a good point. There's a, there's a picture doing round, isn't there? There's 17. Yeah. He's got a team of 17 at EIS, and there's all his security in that. There's a lot of people eating off Joshua, isn't there? Yeah. He, he gets pulled about all over the place, and none of them people want him to get in with Fury and get a good idea and then it, and it all to be ended. Because he could walk, couldn't he? He might have said, you know what, I've had enough of this. He's living in a, go- a goldfish bowl or, or, as it is. I just think that he's got that many around him, people, that I don't think he'll be risked. I don't, they're not going to risk his cash carry. He's he's built macho money in. As long as the fans keep paying these pay-per-views, that's, I think... Terry said in one of his podcasts, that's what they deserve, right? Yeah. As long as people keep paying, if the numbers are good for this pay-per-view, why put him in with Fury? Yeah. Yeah, I see, I see, I see, what, I see your point. So what next for him now? Where does he fight? Who does he fight next if it's not Fury? Uh, Usyk for the WBO. I mean, that, that's a fight that's decent. It can be bold and, you know, they can make it into a pay-per-view 25 quid. If, yeah. you fought, if he fights Usyk next, I'll give him big respect because I think Usyk beats him, mate. I think he's too skillful for him. I do honestly I think he pick, picks him apart. And then he's got to fight him again in a rematch. I think um, I had Braders actually just nicking the fight against Usyk and the way how the way how uh, Usyk, he can get hit quite a lot. So I think Joshua will get to him. I also don't think Usyk's going to win on points. Whether it's a close fight or not, Usyk just isn't going to win in the UK on points. No. He's got to stop him. He's got to stop him. But I just don't think 
because of the size difference, he won't. Don't you know? Yeah. I mean, he couldn't stop Chisora. Yeah. All right, then moving on from Joshua. Uh, we've spoke about Callum Smith. Uh, what do you think? His own. Hey? The zone's coming to the UK. Yeah, week, that's what I wanted. I was just coming to it now. The zone. What do you think about the zone coming to the UK and Eddie Earn, kind of like in middle of the zone and Sky? Where, where do you see that relationship ending? Tricky times for Eddie because it's obviously his fight on the zone um, in the UK. Callum Smith, who's a Sky fighter, so he can't really overtly promote the zone. But I think he's actually explore. He's looking at the option because if the zone are willing to give Eddie the same money as Sky, why not put him on the zone if you Eddie? As in, why not move to the zone? So what he's assessing is what the appetite is, and it will be interesting to see how many people end up watching this fight in the zone. Yeah, because that's a good indicator. Because it's a big fight, it's the middle of the night. That's a good indicator of where we are in this battle for well, what Eddie needs to consider the zone or Sky. You think the zone will go under? Uh, I don't think they'll go under, but they'll point a streamline. So they've got lots of sports in lots of different markets. So they might just consolidate. And obviously, they've launched in the UK. I wouldn't be surprised if they pulled out of the US because yeah. it just hasn't worked in the US. So it might be cheaper to do that in Europe, right? If you have the European fighters. Uh, on the zone, so Sky Stable and you know some other Sowland shows. It's a lot cheaper than having all of you know competing with Heyman and Bob Arum and others. Yeah, it's uh, going to be interesting times, isn't it, for all the uh, company men at Sky, at actually seeing what's going to go on here because if Sky decide to shut boxing down, well. Where's that going to leave Bean and Nelson and Juggiers and all the rest of them all? Bell you. I mean, have you seen some of the stuff he's been putting out in the last few days about Joshua? Yeah, he tweeted, I told you so, which I thought was weird because nobody was saying that Yus is going to win this fight. <laughs> nobody was saying anything, to be, anything to be irrelevant, right? Anything to be irrelevant. Can Tony Bell you get his tongue any farther up Joshua's arsehole? That's a rhetoric question. That's what? A rhetoric question. What's the hell does that mean? That means that you know when you ask a question, but nobody needs to answer the question because it's so obvious. Yeah, I mean the 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 uh, the rimming from him is out of control from Bellew. And I think I don't think he knows how bad he he does sound. Does he? Do you see every time something comes out? Could you imagine being married to him? Every time something comes out, Bellew's mouth, it's, I mean, he's talking now. I've just watched an interview somebody sent me and he's saying, we and us, meaning Matchroom. He's talking about Matchroom like he's a partner at Matchroom. We signed him because of we, who's this we? And he came to us to, to, to get into, to get on better shows. He's talking about certain fighters, but. Who's this we and us and what is Bellew to match him? Is he a partner? Has he got shares it's in cult, it? It's this cult mentality, isn't it? You you have this other outfits, uh, boxing outfits, who I won't name, but you have this weird sort of cult mentality where every success for this, you know, even if he has no impact on your life, mm. every success was in that stable outlet is sort of your success. And it's just weird, isn't it? Because Belly is not making money off Joshua winning. I mean, yeah, by all means, support your mate and, um, you know, be supportive, but don't pretend that you've been involved in this stuff. What annoys me about Bellew is this. Anybody else does, says anything or does anything, he jumps on the backs. But now that now that there's a bit of mud being thrown at Matchroom with Shannon Courtney, I was some tweets from mm -hmm. a half a year ago. Racist, racism, I've, I've never seen anything so bad of you from a sports person. Right, 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 right. You know what? You should delete your tweets, even if you said it. Just get rid of that stuff. Also, she didn't front up and own it, did she? So what she did is she tweeted a very badly written statement, which didn't even address the issue, and said that some of the tweets were doctored, which is besides the point because she tweeted some of them. And then what she did is she she tweeted loads of retweets of other tweets, 
so they goes down their timeline yeah some people can't comment but this is how i look at it why hasn't tony bellio come out and slated because in, in that hanging offense in his book stuff like that why hasn't joshua come out why hasn't eddie and none of them are giving it airtime are they yeah i mean it's not their job to come out and crucify one of their own but the least shannon court they should you know do an ifl interview on that that's if, what you should be doing right we should talk about this issue if, if she wants to front it up let Coogan ask the questions and do the interview. How come Coogan's what? not asking her about this in, in an interview? I mean, every time she farts, he goes around to interview her, doesn't he? Basically, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't he go around to interview her once because somebody offered a 10 grand for some socks of hers that were, were not been washed? Something like that. I yeah. mean, and that was a bit fake, but I can't... You know what? They need to... If that was a fighter in Warren Stable or anything else... Oh, they'd be, they'd be all over it. They'd get hammered, wouldn't they? If it were Frank Warren's fighter, if it were one of Frank's or one of Mick's or one of anybody's like that, but they'd... shouldn't the board be doing something? You remember the FA when it was, um, was he Andre Gray had tweeted something homophobic years ago and that got pulled up and he got a few game ban. Um, and the FA looks at this stuff and takes it quite seriously. So, isn't this the board's job to? make sure that people don't bring the sport to disrepute because that's what they should be doing. That's what the board should be doing. Well, she's a role, she's a role model, isn't she? Yeah. Well, it's, it's nearly seven and a half years ago. Right. So she said at first, she, she say she got axed, but nobody knew she was seven and a half years ago, did they? So I think it's all in a bit, in a bit of bad taste, how it's been handled. Do you? Yeah. You know what? You can just say that you were young, you made a mistake, but you understand why you've, uh, offended certain people and uh, you know you want to apologize to anybody you've offended and you know it's all reflection of who you are now but you still feel very you still feel sort of very disgusted by what you've written and hope it's a lesson for everybody not to you know to be open-minded and yada 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 something like that but you can't say that it's other people's fault but you apologize mm. what, what do you think next for Anthony Yard Good question. Uh, I'd like to see a London Arter rematch. I mean, it's a terrible fight to watch, but I think that's probably the natural next point because it's a close fight. Um, I think that's the natural next fight. And they do have a rematch called, suppose, apparently, so why not? You think Yard will just go after him straight away next time? Yeah, but what will be interesting if Arter hurts his hand, how much of an impact will that have on his fighting? Oh, yeah, I suppose, yeah. I mean, he's all right, that Lyndon as well. He's a good fighter, isn't he? They've done yeah, well. he's good. Flown his under trainer, the radar. His trainer, Pat Barrett, seems to have gone under the radar, doesn't he? As, yeah. as, as, a, as a top trainer. He doesn't seem to get a lot of kudos, does he, Pat Barrett? He's done well with Zelfa. He's done well with Lyndon, hasn't he? And That's why Matt Hawking would say, because he's not hanging off the back of IFL. He's not <laughs> hanging out at the back of Coogan, is he? Like all the rest of them. Uh, you don't really see Joe Gallagher do any interviews with Coogan no more, do you? Do you think there might be a bit of beef there, a bit of raw beef? I don't know. I mean, look, Coogan likes to stir the pot, don't they? They like to stir the pot, so I fell. And I think Tunde came out afterwards and he did a few interviews with a few outlets, but he said he doesn't like doing interviews with IFL because I think I send you that clip because they don't portray him uh, in the right way and also... The next thing you know, they'll go up to everybody and ask if Tunde says in jest about the sparring thing. Because you know that sparring thing is not true, right? What the yard spars. Yard spars, right? You know well, it's all made spars, up. Yeah, he does spar. I've been told it's, it a, it's a bit of a wind-up thing, isn't it, for yeah. getting people talking. So do you think, uh, you know, if IFL go after Tunde says that, if they go around asking every trainer in the country, what do you think about that? Are they doing Tunde any favours? Are they doing Yard any favours? And I think that's the problem with IFL. It's all about entertainment rather than actually... Boxing. Boxing, yeah. It's a shame, actually, because I think Coogan's an hard worker and a good interviewer, but he, he's also got agendas where the money-driven and they want to keep the mates happy, like MTK and Fury, and they want to yeah. keep Ian happy and Billy Joe. He has his favourites done. There's like a core of people, isn't there, of about 20. And if you take... But there's more than that that 20 in boxing. I mean, I'd like to see Coogan go out 
get in his car and drive 100 mile and go interview with somebody who's had two fights who nobody knows, give them a bit of their time. Go up to Mick Well, Wayne. you know what? He should have been interviewing Pat Barrett before the fight and uh, he's black flash promotions, isn't it? Yeah, but you don't you don't go up to Pat Barrett's gym, does he? Go speak to Steve Wood. If you really want to know about boxing, see speak to yeah. Steve Wood. You don't you don't see him go to Nick Manners gym in Leeds, do you? Yeah, speak to Steve Goodwin, speak to Steve Wood. You know, there's lots of other people in boxing outside the southeast. Yeah. They're stuck in that bubble, Rico, in my opinion. They don't seem to be wanting to share the cake, if you know what I mean. They, they feel it's like Michelle Phelps. When have you ever seen her go to, to she used to come up to Sheffield up here, you know, and interview Dominic, Ingle, Billy Joe, Galahad, all them at the Ingle gym. But to get there, she has to go by Mick Wales gym, uh, Glyn Rose gym, Dennis Hobson's gym. You've got to go by uh, Chris Smedley's gym. You've got to go by all them gyms to get to get to Ingle. So wh- wh- why? Why not share it? Because they only want to interview people that do numbers. Zero. Yeah, but isn't it one of those things? If you don't, if somebody like Glenn Rhodes, right? He's an MBE. He does a lot around the community. If you don't interview him, tell him the story, then people aren't going to be know his story. Isn't that the point? That you need to interview these people so that you know yeah. what their stories are. Glenn Rhodes, uh, he should go interview Glenn Rhodes and ask him about why he pulled Tommy Frank out of the fight and stuff like that. What, 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 were it, what did Tommy want pulling out, or did Glenn see something that? He wanted to save his kid for another day because Glenn says his fighters are like his babies. So, and maybe it would hurt it because he's had Tommy since he was eight years old. Maybe yeah. it hurt him. He's had him 20 years now. Maybe it hurt him to see Tommy taking punishment and only have one hand. I don't know, but could Tommy have carried on? Yeah. Did he show balls? Well, yeah, he did. But, you know, maybe Tommy might have found his level now. I don't know. But it'd be nice for somebody to go interview Glenn and give him a bit of airtime, wouldn't it? Or Richard Towers. Richard Towers. Got, you don't see anybody going up to Richard's gym, IFL, do you? Nobody, or, yeah, he's, a, he's an emerging trainer, very good young trainer. Yeah, what about uh, Steffi Bull's gym? You don't see him going there regular. They don't no. come up here. They don't come up here unless it's in their best interests. So I, I, I think that's wrong. I do, I really think it's wrong. It's not getting shared out properly. But... What can you do? It's it's the boxing industry, isn't it? It's a flawed business where it can get friends falling out. It's all designed. To, the rules are there for everybody to fall out, aren't they, I suppose? Yeah. But, uh, all right, then. Uh, where do you see women's boxing heading at the moment, Rico? They just need to make the best fights. It's that simple. I mean, I don't want to watch Shannon Courtney beat up somebody that's average. I don't want to watch Katie Taylor against somebody that's not on their level. I mean, they have the potential to make some good fights and they should do that because sooner rather than later. Do you see Savannah Marshall fighting Clarissa Shields this next year? I hope so. That's a great fight. I'd actually pay pay-per-view for that. I think that's worth a pay-per-view, 20, 20 quid, isn't it, on a way good undercard? Yeah, why not? Or even on an undercard of a Joshua fight. But do you think it'll happen because she's crossed over to MMA now, hasn't she? I don't think it will just because she's crossed over. She'll want to fight in a new sport for a while. Savannah's actually done some MMA. She's trained in that as well. Uh, Whether she crosses over herself, I'm not sure, but she has done some MMA, UFC is what they call it, don't they? Training. Uh, I wouldn't want to get in the ring with her in boxing, (laughs) let alone MMA. She's a lovely girl, Savannah. Do you know what? She switched, she turns, this is, she's got a streak in her, but she's so quiet, you wouldn't think somebody could punch like that, would you, for a girl? <laughs> <laughs> but All she's right. man. Yeah, exactly. Peter uh, McDonough and others. So Peter McDonough, yeah. So I've seen a part of Spinner Spar, Peter, yeah. But uh, she, uh, she's, she's come a cropper a couple of times as well because they're going to they're be on point, aren't they? Yeah. Imagine having to spar and being a man thinking, I don't want to get, don't want to get dropped here because she's capable of dropping them. <laughs> but uh, all right then, mate. Well, we'll uh, we'll leave it at that for today. We've had a good chat, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Uh, we'll do one before Christmas at some point. Yeah. Hopefully when I guess uh, back well, back to Finland. Christmas special with Rico. Yeah, we'll do one. We'll do like an end of year review or something. People can what? leave comments at the bottom uh, if they want an end of year review. 
Yeah. Would you like an end of year review? Leave a leave a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share it with your mates if you yeah, like. So also uh, send some questions over to Ross, uh, and then he can uh, he can include those in the end of year review, and we'll do a bit of a video before Christmas. Send the questions to Porky Corner at mail dot com, and uh, we'll, we'll read them out. We're only going to do ten questions, and we'll we'll give each question three minutes, so that can, that's like an half an hour topic on that, and we'll do an end of, end of year review. All right. Well, listen. So good, good for you. I really enjoyed the Mickey Theo video. Very well done. Nice production. I like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You had a company from uh, Leeds came down with me uh, and and did it. So we could have could have it was only twenty minutes. One. It could have done a lot more, but I just that was enough. It's enough twenty minutes in it, and we got the point across. He wants to fight John Fury. He's he trained. He's an hard trainer. Now I watched him train for an hour. Uh, he's from stretching. He really knows his body. Stretching to uh, to the, the all the work in the ring, the sparring and pads and all that and bags, and stretching at the end. And he, he's he proper he's he's into the human body and he knows how it works and all that. For example, we went to this Italian restaurant. He had pasta and two pieces of chicken, and obviously I I, I can't eat a lot of this. I I had a little tiny bit, but. He, he didn't eat all his pasta and he only had, had one piece picked one piece of chicken and I said, Oh, you're like you're not. He says, No, I know when when I'm when I've had enough, I don't overeat. So so he's really I can imagine him weighing his food and all that, Mickey, you know, when he was a bodybuilder and that, but he's pretty yeah. dedicated and he can punch as well. Like, you know, and he, don't forget he was in that ring with big gloves on as well, biggest ones you can get. It might have been 18 ounces. I think they might do bigger ones that I think they're 18 ounce gloves on. But yeah. Very dedicated. I want to see him sprint, man. From what I've heard, he can really, he can does ill runs and all sorts. He's proper into his training. He loves it, and that's why I think he's got a good chance against John. Yeah, he's lighter. Yeah, he's shorter. But I just think his fitness should beat John Fury. But we're going to see, aren't we? If John takes the fight, John's obviously shot his mouth off a lot, but he's he's not he's not reacting to it, is he? he Don't. He's not coming out, is he? And wanted to fight. He's probably got a lot to lose if he loses John Annie. Yeah, I he's agree. Got well, it should be Annie. a good fight. If it happens, it, it's going to be an entertaining fight. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see it happen. Uh, there's a lot going off behind the scenes as regards a streaming platform. That's all been took, taken care of. A venue that's all, all all sorted. Security, referee, timekeeper, everything. It's all in place. It's just a case of getting it all drawn up on a contract and. And it'll be sent to talking promotions. I don't know about that, but uh, you know, I'd like to think that I've help, helped him out. His mate were obviously doing a bit of help for money, but he sadly passed away, didn't he? Boom, yeah. which really upset me. Actually, I've, I've had him on my mind every day since because he were a bit larger than life, wasn't he? Yeah, exactly. And he, he were doing a bit of helping him out, but I don't mind help, helping Mickey if he wants to get his point across. I was obviously, I've had a bit of stick over it on, on comment section, but you know, it's water for ducks back now, isn't it? After yeah, exactly. Years. But I think that I'd like to see the fight. John would probably start a favourite, I think, you know, because of that experience. He's been a pro boxer, hasn't he? But I'd like to see Mickey be given a chance to fight him and may the best man win. What do you think, Rico? Yeah. I agree. It would be entertaining. I'd probably back Mickey just down to fitness and everything else. But yeah, it would be entertaining. Well, if it were over eight rounds, eight three-minute three minute rounds, that's 24 minutes, and John's blowing out his ass after two rounds. <laughs> It'll be a long night. <laughs> All right, my friend. All right, thank you, mate. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Cheers. Bye. Oh, that was my good friend Rico from London, born in Finland, works in marketing down there. Good bloke, Rico. Uh, yes, yeah, send your questions into Porky Corner at mail.com. And what we'll do, we'll we'll do an end it year thing. We Rico and I'll probably do one with Terry as well. I might even get them both on. We'll see. Eh? Uh, so not putting all videos out for a couple of days, but that's free done now. So you'll you'll get to see them in probably tomorrow or some. Oh, still feel a bit crap to be honest. I don't feel very really well, but it is what it is. So big shout out to. Innovation Alloys, big shout out to the Lever Company, big shout out to Lacoste, big shout out to my pal Frank in Berry. 
And a big shout out to all them people who keep sending them lovely, lovely emails. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. All right. Big shout out to Terry as well. Beautiful boxing podcast, which I'm going to listen to now because he's uploaded another. I like to keep on top of things. I'm very thorough. Peace out.